A very prominent U.S. senator is signaling some bombshell news that, if true, will throw a big wrench into the wheels of the Trump train and is based on insider information that he has from Republican senators, and I have the full story for you next. Donald Trump's carnival wheel of sketchy appointing nominations has been spinning wildly, and it's been hard to keep up with the conjecture from the reporters and the pundits, but this story rises above them all because the conjecture is coming from a voting member of the Senate who is in his third term, and he was once a state attorney general. So as sources go, it doesn't get any better. Andy says he has first-hand knowledge of the fate that awaits one of the FOTs. That's my acronym for Friends of Trump. I'll show you his words and a video that shows the nominee's defiant reaction to the controversy in just a minute. But first, I want to share a fascinating expose by CNN that breaks down the FOT cabal. The CNN video came to my attention by way of an ex post by Republicans Against Trump that read, Trump is stalking his administration with billionaires, Fox News contributors, and friends who hosted events at Mar-a-Lago. The best people, my ass. So before I show it, what category do you think has the highest number when it comes to Trump nominees? Do you think there are more billionaires, Fox News contributors, or people who have paid tribute by paying the Mar-a-Lago piper? Is your answer locked in? Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, there are a lot of fun numbers when it comes to this. How about billionaires, all right? How many Trump administration picks are billionaires? At least five, at least five are billionaires. I wish I was a billionaire. Here it is in photo form. You can see it on your screen. You know, you get folks like Elon Musk, well-known, Vivek Ramaswamy, well-known. How about those on Fox News? It's not just Pete Hegseth, right? How about this? At least 11, at least 11 Fox News hosts or contributors. Again, you just see, it's just so many names on here. My goodness gracious, We've got 11 on here. And finally, how about Mar-a-Lago? You know, Trump administration picks who hosted or co-hosted events at Mar-a-Lago. Look at this number. It is 12, 12, including those who co-hosted events at Mar-a-Lago. The bottom line is this, is that Trump is someone who feeds on people being loyal to him. And there's no greater sign of loyalty than hosting or co-hosting event at Mar-a-Lago. So congratulations if you guessed right that more appointees have paid the Trump toll at Mar-a-Lago than have worked for Fox or are among Trump's elite friends. But sadly, there are no winners if that's the lot that's going to be serving us. Trump didn't drain the swamp. He built a tacky mansion next to it and stocked it full of pet snakes. Now let's have a look at the defiant nominee that I hinted at, and he is one of those pet snakes that appeared on the first video. He sounds a bit desperate in this clip, and on the other side, I'll play the senator's words that confirms why he definitely should feel that way. I'm proud of what I fought for. I'm not going to back down from them one bit. I will answer all of these senators' questions, but this will not be a process tried in the media. I don't answer to anyone in this group, none of you, not to that camera at all. I answer to... President Trump, who received 76 million votes on behalf and a mandate for change. I answer to the 50, the, the 100 senators who are part of this process and those in the committee. Uh, and I answer to my Lord and Savior and, and my wife and my family. I'm proud to be here. And as long as Donald Trump wants me in this fight, I'm going to be standing right here in this fight, fighting to bring our Pentagon back to what it needs to be. And now for senior Senator Richard Blumenthal from Connecticut, who has been talking to Republican senators who will vote on the fate of problematic Pete. He, for one, doesn't think he'll be seeing Hegseth in the hallowed halls of the White House. I think this nomination is doomed. All right. I, I would be very surprised if we're still talking about Pete Hegseth. Even by the end of the week. You, you just don't think he has enough support? I've talked to five to ten Republicans who have said to me, they're just waiting for the right moment to say no to Pete Hesse. And for very good reasons. If this nomination moves forward, I'm going to be demanding records about his past financial dealings, not to mention the sexual improprieties alleged and also the apparent abuse of alcohol. I think that the financial dealings at some of the organizations where he has been involved 
are potentially disqualifying along with those other factors. Senator, your colleague saying that to you privately is a much lower bar than being willing to vote against him publicly or even say publicly that they won't support him. Why do you think so few Republicans, none by my count, have been willing to come out and say they will definitively not support this nominee? Nobody wants to defy Donald Trump if you're a Republican. Mm -hmm. The power of the presidency, not to mention this president elect and what the retribution might be, I think is pretty daunting. And so I think Republicans are reluctant to step forward and be the first one. But I think privately, they're much readier to advise the president that the better part of wisdom would be to urge withdrawal of this nomination. Did My feeling is that there may be a lot of factors going through people's minds right now as to what the timing is. And as I've said, uh, I'd be surprised if we're still talk about Hegseth at the end of the week or by Monday. Once Hegseth is vanquished, the media microscope of doom will surely turn on the next extreme friend of Trump, conspiracy enthusiast and nominee Cash Patel. I was surprised not to see his name and face on the list of Fox hosts and contributors. Maybe he's too extreme for even Fox? In anticipation, I'll give MSNBC the final word to get you up to speed on his swampiness. The only good thing about being in the swamp is you get to sit in the dojo that Steve Bannon built. And that's where I'm operating right now in my Trumpomania t-shirt because that's what it's all about. That is Cash Patel. That's the man Donald Trump nominated to run the FBI. He's never worked for the FBI, but he does host Steve Bannon's War Room podcast a lot where he loves to share conspiracy theories. The Chinese, the CCP, um, helped fund portions of the Biden campaign. To get the sergeant at arms to go out and arrest Merrick Garland. They want everything and every way to rig this system, just like the censorship regime. We're going back to Wuhan, we're going back to Corvid Origins, and we're going back to another form of a mega virus that can take out China's enemies. They're in on it with the mainstream media, the Biden-Harris-Waltz campaign, and of course the FBI. These folks are mostly made of podcasts at this point, and from the little I've heard, what he's been saying is pretty out there. 